Good morning, peoples. How's it going here from Switzerland in Knutwil, not too far from the big city of Sursee, up in pretty much northern mid Switzerland. Here with the iconic ladies of the region. Are you ladies, though? Oh, wait a second. Probably not. I'm no. I'm not very good at this cow steer bull whatever thing, but. That has no udders. Anyway, good morning. So over two weeks later that I've spent with the family, and by now we're in mid-November, as you can see, and winter is definitely here now, and it's here to stay for a while. And today we'll be heading out. It's about 700 kilometers to my final destination in the Netherlands, in the south. So we'll see if we do this in one day, or we still split it up. It depends how it goes along the way. Maybe a little surprise stop in Belgium, who knows? Moose, a Wiedersehen. Tschüss. I'm not even sure if the Swiss, the Swiss say that. You know what? I might have spotted some udders there, but they're not big milkers though, as I expect from the cows that produce milka or whatever chocolate they make. All right. Let's again to Deutschland or La France. We'll see where, where we get first. Not too far from here. Be going through uh, probably through about four or five countries in the next 36 hours. Such as Europa. Let's go. As we ride into Ufikon. You see these old farms? This is actually made of stone. But you see mostly these wooden farms on the side of the road. These very old farm, farm wooden farmsteads. See, look, like this. Really cool, eh? That traditional stuff. I was almost in Germany and I saw this on the road, Augusta Rauritza. We're right here on the Rhine. We can do a little bit of roam spotting before we head to the other side, to the land of back then the savages, always trying to ruin what Rome was doing. Let's see if it's easy access here at Augusta Rauritza. Augustus, Augusta comes from Augustus and Rauritza comes from the tribe that used to be here. Sweet! That is cool! It's in the town and you can still drive. Uh, what? Oh, what? I didn't see what happened there. Oh, uh, well. So we have the amphitheater still partly here. Very cool. You see it's been very much restored. It's not completely in original. Oh, let's get, let's get off and have a close look. There's more here. Let's have a look, right? Just like this out in the open. You know, you could be living there. Hey, where do you live? Yeah, I live right next to the Roman amphitheater. Cool. That's is good. Or whatever the Swiss say. When you want to say that. So how cool is that? Living on the hills here, by the Rhine, right next to a Roman amphitheater. I don't know what this was, but this was also part of it. So Augusta Rauritza, or Raurica, as usual pronunciation is perfect, was founded about uh, 5040 BC. We would only cross this in less organized countries. In Switzerland, I know. we have a line here. <laughs> we respect. Uh -huh. So you're, you're touring Switzerland now? I was, man, I was just crossing the border and then I saw the Augusta Rauritza sign. Oh uh, yeah, I see. And that's why I came by here. Oh. Otherwise I would have been in Germany by now. You still have this huh? Yeah. 
I have a 95. You have a 95? What is that yours? How's it going? Good. Well, good. Yeah, yeah Oswaldo. Oswaldo. Gottfried, yeah. Gottfried Oswaldo. Yeah. Nice Oswaldo to meet you, man. Godfrey, yeah. <laughs> nice Oswaldo. to meet you, too. Uh, I, I've been watching some of your videos, actually. <laughs> what a... But a while back, I reckon, because you're still asking, do you still have the Alp? Or you have the Alp against, you probably watch South America, no? I did South America, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I come originally from Uruguay. Right. And you've been any chance in England, too, for a while? No, why? Why is that? Well, you got a bit of a you got a bit of an elegant accent going on, also. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe it's because of the, well, no. let's the, go down the English town and uh, Uruguay is uh, really well. That's mo mostly from uh, UK. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's South America for you, right? I guess so. Yeah. England, England, Germany, yeah, England was... Ireland, all the colonies yeah, like yeah. in Brazil, yeah. Chile full of Germans. Yeah, that's so and, and part of Brazil too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what is your trip next? Well, I'm pretty much. This is the closing uh, finale. Nah, it's not police motor. They're like, we don't understand that man's German. What is he talking? <laughs> hey, Oswaldo, what well, about that that Swiss German? Swiss German. It's a big umbrella for for a thousand of different dialects. Uh, the fact is, I don't know if you know that, uh, from Zurich to the Valle, uh, there have been different dialects, and I heard that sometime to communicate, they need to switch to English. Yeah, right. Instead of well, using the... Wow, they don't even have a common language anymore. No! The dialect doesn't <laughs> surprise me, because the Netherlands is for about, is about uh, 250, 300 by 400, 450, and there's like five dialects at least, and you can't understand, and couldn't, can't understand them and one of them can be considered uh, its own language or pretty much is like Frisian so that doesn't surprise me well that's your view that's, yeah. that's the neat thing about it you know so rich when yeah. it comes to this well you want to have you checked out uh, the ruins here <laughs> already or what uh, I just started I just came out of the Mu museum. museum yeah they said I like ah oh, forget about the museum I just wanted to check if, if they were accessible and I like that it's accessible yeah. this is the best I don't want an entry I don't want people I'm surprised it's accessible yeah, yeah. no but this is this is great I understand why they close it off and you know and then it's for upkeep and whatnot but my favorite part is ruins in the wild and this is ruins in a suburb <laughs> yeah see and this leads back to the road there. there's someone someone's house you know yeah What's, this, what's crossing my mind? You, know, you have your own backyard here. Uh, it still was a big settlement. 10, 15,000 people lived here. 20,000 or so about the peak, right? Something even more. Like well, even okay. more, yeah. Well, you could be gardening in the back of your house, you know, or digging. Yeah. And you might find, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be up to a big surprise. So as well, I've been to a museum. I, I, I read up a little bit on it. And this is the oldest colony on the Rhine. And you know, it only came around 40, 30 BC, completely developed like 15, 10 BC when August conquest uh, conquered the Central Alps. But I think it was more like, oh, first they went to Iberia, you know, <laughs> nice and warm. And then it's like, oh man, okay, we'll do the Alps. We'll stay on this side of the, ri the river, you know, because there's all these people there. They keep coming in, trying to destroy everything we built yeah, all the time. Germanics. Yes. Ah, the savages. So they oh, use the river all the way, all the way up, up, up into the Netherlands. Um, they use the Rhine as a defense to keep all the German tribes on the oil. Well, German tribes and then later, it's just this whole migration came from the plains, you know, from Mongolia, Kazakhstan, kept pushing tribe after tribe into into the Rhine, into the empire. But uh, this was one of the first, probably one of the earlier places on, on the Rhine then for it to be one of the oldest. And well kept, huh? Yeah. And uh, through here would come, well, no, the, I was going to say the actors, but that's over there. This is the people. Originale Romische Mauerbergvlaggen met vugen, strich en resten rotter ausmalung. Oh wait, original Roman wall surface yeah, yeah. <laughs> pointing and traces of red paint. Really? Traces of red paint. Over here. Brick, maybe. Some more of the original walls.
Do you, does it say on the map when uh, this uh, Roman building was built? <laughs> I think it's a little bit off to that. Well, that, that should be way back. My pleasure, Oswaldo. Pedro, Un placer. Yeah. La verdad que sí. Te vaya muy bien aquí, eh? Igualmente, igualmente. Ha sido una sorpresa. Yeah, right. It just happens. It, it just happens. But yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, what are the odds, huh? It's, yeah. yeah, amazing. Just amazing. Well, enjoy the ruins, my man. I gotta keep, a, I gotta keep on going. There's more. There's actually spread out more around here. But uh, we already got our Roman fix. And yes. uh, we're gonna keep on uh, going because uh, we might end up in Belgium somewhere. I'm not telling you where yet. So many hours, so many, you know. Uh, yeah, so, so much daylight in it's the day. About, so. It's about eight, so we're gonna be riding at night. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, well, you're used to that, so. <laughs> hey, man. Have, yeah. a good, have a good day off, man. Okay, maybe I'll meet you somewhere else in see, the future. Who knows? And I'll see you in the comments, <laughs> my man. Ciao. Okay, very good one. Just like that. You find good company. So I think here you have the Roman Empire at its furthest extent because it includes the parts of Iraq into Iran. This later disappeared again. Armenian part two. This is the greatest extent. Nagusararitsa was here. So this was used to be the frontier and then they went up a notch. But this Rhine section here in the Netherlands I don't even think if they really went above the Netherlands. This remained, the rivers here, one of the main borders of the empire. So I said in a, in a, in a previous video one time, so at all these places, where you go around the Mediterranean, you can find these kind of ruins. It's a, it's a, it's a cool thing, isn't it? All right, Atlas, you were right again. You got your fix in, but uh, we got to keep going now. We, we have a bit of a mission today, all right? Wait, you want to say hello first, Atlas, before we go? No worries. You going to say hi to Oswaldo's Alp? Remember when you looked like this? A 95 Trans Alp. Hey, look at that. Someone also has the power port in the dash. Nice golden rim still. Looking pristine, this one. 72,000. Not an Alp with a lot of miles on it. Ooh, not even those rusty points on the engine yet. Very nice. They run forever, folks. Say choose, Atlas. Let's get back on the road. So, choose, uh, we in Schweiz. We cross the mighty Rhine River. Ooh, look at that old bridge over there made of stone. Oh. I don't know if I'm going to make my target today. <laughs> Bundesrepublik Deutschland. Also, wir sind wieder ja. <laughs> Welcome to Germany, peoples. And again, another place I haven't been to since 2014 when I left on that ride once a long time ago. Oh shit, yeah. And as soon as it started, as soon as it ends, Frankreich is almost there. But it was a, it was a quickie for Germany. It's not ideally what I want to do. It feels really weird today on the highway. I feel like I'm finally a bit at ease, but it feels like I'm doing it wrong. I'm making the episode wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got that, pretty much that uh, final sprint feel when you're getting back to your destination. I think I'm gonna go for it today. So that I know the whole region. I've come from Nancy before, I've come through Germany before that section into the Alps. But it means I'll be riding in the dark though the final few hours. So at least we go for a little town before we uh, head to France. Kartoffeln, yeah, potatoes. 
Lots of fresh produce out here. Apples, apples and whatnot. Café. Warm up a little. Votre boisson est en cours de préparation. Bring it on. Merci. A bientôt. About 240 to do. And it's already a kinda not so comfy cold. Fix the upper body a bit. Not much I can do about the legs except wearing jeans or my rain suit, which is in this bag. No way I'm gonna open that. Bloody winter. It's only like 540, man. Luxembourg? What the hell is that? Well, that's actually a country. One of the smallest in Europe. Still bigger than Andorra, I reckon. Only a population of about 600, 650,000 people. So uh, before you know it, we'll be out of it again. Oh yeah, this extra layer feels cozy. Like it's pretty busy in Luxembourg. Everybody wants to be here. Well, that's a proper standstill today. Sickle. And this, you know, is why we trade off suffering in the rain or in the cold for displeasure. And I'm going too slow 
to keep the helmet on fog. Now it's better. We're in Belgium. Atlas is a little bit hyped and rightfully so. Cause that's a Belgium plate she has on the rear. Now we're in Belgium. Mind you folks, riding the highway in the dark in Belgium could be more dangerous than some of the off-road we have done in the past. Final stretch. to get to that point where the cold's in your bones or something but it's like already a part of you you don't notice it as much anymore so it's okay atlas you're in your home country you've been working very hard today let's give you a little treat all right and where are we now Instead of going straight up north into the Netherlands, I'm on the ring of Brussels now. Going around that big capital of uh, Belgium. So Liz is a little bit excited being back in her country and all that. I think we gotta pay a little visit somewhere. At this hour, I might at this hour it's a special kind of visit so almost there welcome back in mesa does it all look familiar atlas we're back at papa bob's house we made a little detour Well, that was a long day. So, I've already spent like almost five minutes with Papa Bob. He was dropped off by Karin. Yeah. Hello, Karin, nogmaals. She uh, she watched some videos too. And uh, it wasn't recording, it was doing something else. It was making a time lapse for some reason. We're back here with Papa Bob. He was just uh, checking out Atlas. Oh, no, he missed that part. He called her Alp. Yeah, I did. He called it. Somehow, <laughs> I was thrown back to the past. I uh, couldn't believe it was her. And he was uh, checking around with the battle scars and all, because, yeah, we made some along the way uh, already. But as far as I'm concerned, they can stay, you know, forever. <laughs> <laughs> Just rolled in here. Uh, you were taking care of the, the kids? Uh, well, my wife is. Yes. So um, she you, stayed. And oh, you slipped uh, she, out. She, she stayed with a car and a friend uh, brought me home because it was really short notice, but I'm so happy. And by the way, you must be hungry. A little bit. Okay, then I suggest that uh, we head for uh, a friterie. Uh, a friterie? Yeah, oh, let's wait, go wait. for fries. All right, all right. fries. All right, all right. All right, all right. Does this look familiar, Bob? Oh, no kidding, but... What can happen on the road, eh? Well, <laughs> <laughs> We have some damage inside. No, it was all... This This was an... Under, underpants with holes in Yeah, I might have. <laughs> my uh, my medic bag is, looks a bit different now, yeah. but... Uh, not too shabby. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, time for some... Uh, Belgian food. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right. So we get we get to Belgium, and first first things first, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get some culture in us. We're gonna get some patatkes, some fritten. What is it? What what was it? Patatten or fritten here? We, uh, we say fritten, eh? Yeah, uh, the fritten, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fries. So it's still open. Uh, you you choose whatever you want. Oh, it's look a, at the, oh, the. Oh, they got the snacks. And uh, they got the snacks too. Aangenaam. Good evening. Oh, Mexicano! Yes. Yeah, you know Mexicano? Yeah, yeah, do my Dimar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they are medium. And a medium. Yeah, and there's all that short here. Will you look at this? Are you, aren't you having any? No, uh, I, I had a dinner and a very good dinner, so. 
Al uh, dan in dat case doen we uh, na nice frikandelke daar. Ja. We got the Belgium gold here. Oh ja. Yeah. Kan smelly hè. <laughs> mm, oh oh. Denk je dat zij er zout op heeft? Did you put some salt on there? Yeah, well, we you never know. We we got that. We got salt and we got uh, mayo and whatever. Sweet. Let's dig in, man. I don't want to let the, the unpacking and then. Let me see. Very Kijk eens, basic. echte, echte Belgische fritten, hè? Mm. This is peak Dutch and Belgium culture right here. Mm, she did put the salt. It makes us happy that did put salt in. Mm. Mm. I got traditional mayo, uh, mayonnaise. Bring it on. That was the mission for today. Get Atlas back, back home for a little visit and chill with Papa Ball. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cheers. Have a oh, seat. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's sit down. Okay. Oh. Thanks, Bob. I'll get you a Belgian beer. Um. You know Duvel? Oh yeah. You like Duvel? You stay here and you have to go nowhere. So yeah, 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 yeah. Bring it on. If you feel sleepy, don't worry. I'll have one as well. Duvelke. Yeah, ja, weet je voor de gezelligheid, hè? <coughs> Bob doesn't actually. Bob doesn't want to drink a nice Duvelke, but you know. Since there's company, it would be unpolite to do so. People, this is what they call in Belgium and the Netherlands a frikandel. All the meat goes on in one end, whatever there's left, and on the other side comes this beautiful thing. You fry it, it looks like this on the inside. So may you want it. Mmm. This is the top Dutch and Belgian cuisine, right? Oh yeah. It's your first picandelle in how many? Well, since I uh, since you since left, since yeah. I left, yeah. It was the first it's... thing that I ate once I got <laughs> back here, yeah. This is another special Belgian product. Oh yeah. It's a devil in a bottle. Small glasses, so the pressure layer is longer. See, that's how it works. Yeah. All around the world, the culture of Pilsner is to drink it fast. But special beer goes. It's oh, all about wow. just chilling. Slow. Taking them in. Enjoy it. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, prachtig. Yeah. And there is something special about this glass. How so? You see the bubbles in the in the bottom? Oh yeah. It's uh it's not a coincidence. They engrave something in the bottom of no the way. glass, the D of the yeah. And because of that uh, engravement, there are uh, bubbles uh, <coughs> created. It wouldn't if it wasn't there. Because it, it created the uneffenheid. Yeah, it's because of the, um, What's yeah, the, the surface, a yeah, uh, 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 rougher surface, ah, yeah. that the gas comes out of the... Um, yeah, so it's all details, it's all culture. So, there you go. There you go, Peep. We got Bel all the Belgian culture right here, right now. Cheers, Cheers Rod. Pleasure to be back. Great to see you, man. Me too. Mm. Prost, uh, everyone. <laughs> In casa di Bob. A casa. Atlas, Atlas has many times talked about it, so finally. It was, uh, <laughs> it was Atlas that said, Pedro, come one day, mi casa su casa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, she speaks Spanish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. She spent more uh, time in Iberia the last oh, yeah. well, six, seven years than any indeed. of us, probably. Indeed. They're not big milkers, though. <laughs> <laughs>